When it comes to marketing to properties with multiple homeowners, who am I going to prioritize and how am I going to market to them? Properties with multiple homeowners, such as divorced couples, properties owned by businesses, or properties in trusts, they present unique challenges when marketing. The conventional wisdom of marketing to homeowners may seem thorough, but it offers really unique challenges when there's two, three, sometimes four or five owners. What you need is a process that's designed specifically for these situations. Okay, dealing with multiple homeowner properties is a great way to 2x, 3x, or even 4x your skip trace in marketing spend, which you and I both know you don't want. What we will do next is focus on why focusing on the primary owner is the initial strategy that you're gonna wanna follow. We're also gonna discuss how to move and pivot when necessary. So let's fill this gap with actionable steps. Step one, the initial focus. What you're gonna do first is you're gonna start with the primary homeowner. And what you're gonna do with that primary owner is you're going to follow the exact flow that you usually do. If you don't have a marketing flow, obviously check out our Sensei Flow videos or our first to market challenge or our first to market videos. Follow your marketing flow. Don't deviate, just stick to the process, bring the data into your system, skip trace it, collect your phone numbers, correct phone numbers, whatever you're doing, just follow that. Step two, diving deeper. This is when maybe that initial flow that you went through with the primary owner didn't lead to anything successful. You didn't gather a correct number. If you haven't collected the correct number from the primary owner, now we are going to start going into a dive on the secondary owner. This is especially true in scenarios like probate where the primary owner might be deceased. So this is gonna be very important that you remember this process because it could happen quite often, which it's going to, it's gonna happen all the time. Now, if you have phone numbers for the secondary owner, which I'm assuming you didn't get that from the first step, but let's say you do have them, you know, you're just going to market to them as a normal follow-up that you would do and anyways. It's just sticking to that process again. And if you don't have numbers, you're going to do your, your basic dive, deep dive methods, your deep prospecting. You're gonna go to True People Search. You're gonna go to Ben Verify. You're gonna do your extra skip tracing in other locations. You're gonna start digging around to find the contact information that will put you in touch with the secondary homeowner. And obviously when you're skip tracing the secondary owner, getting numbers, you're just repeating the flow that you always follow, like we talked about in step one. And like I said, if you don't have a flow, check out our Sensei flow, check out our first to market challenge. Going on to step three. Step three, efficiency over volume. When marketing to properties with multiple homeowners, marketing chaos can come on fast and it can come on strong. So it's imperative that you're staying organized. The biggest, most important thing is focusing on who you are not reaching. If you are looking for homeowner one, primary homeowner, and you're not getting their numbers, and you're focusing on homeowner number two, and you're not getting their numbers, that means nobody's getting their numbers. That means you're not the only one. That's the beautiful part about prospecting. If you're not reaching them, there's a really good chance that no one else is reaching them. The best way to determine which prospects you are not reaching is to have a CRM or to have the functionality similar to REI SIPs. One where you can track the calling dispositions, where you can track the results of what happened when you called. If you're looking at property A, property B, property C, and on all three of these properties, you never even got in contact with a homeowner, that's pretty good information actually. It might seem disheartening at first. It might mean you're gonna have to do a little extra work. That's where the gold is. You gotta dig in deep to these properties. But when you have a, prop, a CRM like SIP, it makes that process just a little bit easier and a little less hectic or chaotic because you have the ability to know who you haven't reached. Whereas traditionally, or maybe in some other CRMs, you don't have that functionality or you're using just a spreadsheet where you are just, it, it's all on you to make sure that you're typing in the codes right, you're, you're filling in the columns, you're building these intricate spreadsheets, which I know you don't want to do, and you shouldn't have to do. Like I said in step beginning of step three, it's efficiency over volume. You don't need a thousand more property owners to market to. You just need to realize who am I not reaching and how do I get in contact with them? Okay, so we've talked about the initial focus, marketing to the primary homeowner as you would normally on any other home. Step two, now that you haven't maybe gotten in contact with primary homeowner, you're gonna talk to owner number two, number three, number four, whatever. You're gonna collect your numbers just like you do in step one. You're just eliminating 
the ability to find another homeowner. If you can't find one, okay, start tr checking to find number two. If you can't find number two, start checking to find number three and so on and so forth. All of it leads to deep prospecting. If you can't get a hold of people, it's just leading to deep prospecting. Now, like I said, marketing chaos can happen fast. Your data can get so cluttered and so confused, you might not even know what you need to do next. That's where a lot of this, I don't know what to do comes from. And that's coming from business owners of all shapes and sizes and types and skills and, and income levels. If you don't know what to do, it, that's a pretty shitty feeling. So what do you do to keep your data clean and healthy while you are going through cycling through the multiple homeowners. Well, that's where you use a feature like our owner swap feature. If you didn't get in contact with the first homeowner, now it's time to swap the owner. This might not seem like much, but this is going to do a world of good for you in the lifetime of your data because you and I both know that not all leads or not all prospects turn into money right away. Sometimes it takes months, sometimes it takes years if you're diligent. So having the ability to track what's happened over the course of the lifespan of that prospect is a pretty amazing thing to have. And unfortunately, it's not really out there in the, in the marketplace for real estate investors. It's really just inside REI SIP. You know, that's the thing we wanted to be able to do is give clarity and insight to high level real estate investors so that they can refine their data, scale easier, and reach new heights in their business. So let me show you how easy it is to swap owners with REI SIP. Okay, the owner swap feature is super simple. You're gonna use owner swap features for when properties sell to new people and you're gonna update owners um, and some other reasons outside of this. But for today's example with the multiple homeowners, Uploading or uh, swapping owners is really quite simple. It takes a little bit of time and we're not ashamed to tell you that. These are the fundamentals of data management. It's what we do. It's what real businesses do and you should be doing it too. You should understand your data, the history of your data and this is the foundation of it. So if you're, if you're not a person that wants to understand the fundamentals, that's fine, you can leave the video. But for the people that, are, that do wanna know these things, let's get into it. You're gonna go to upload file. You're gonna go to add data. You're gonna go to select one option. You go down to under add contact data. You're gonna go to swap owner of an existing property. And now you're gonna get a couple questions. Does data contain phone numbers? Yes or no, up to you, probably doesn't, but that's up to you. Where was it skip traced? So if you click yes, you say, where was it skip traced? Well, did you skip trace with a SIF, batch, REI skip, whatever, other, Fiverr. And you're also gonna hit, I know when the numbers were skip traced. So if it was skip traced, because you do have numbers, it's a good thing to have the date. It's important. This is the history of your data, knowing when you skip traced it. You know, maybe if it was really long ago, maybe it's worth skip tracing again if this is a property you really want. Maybe something changed. Maybe there's a new phone number you can call. Next step, auto tags. It's automatically, SIFT is gonna automatically add an auto tag about when you skip traced it because we want to help you in knowing the history of your data. But you can also have a, any custom tag you want. Whatever you are going to need to know to differentiate between properties. So if you wanna find this type of property, have a specific tag for it. We generally wanna keep it high level. Uh, we have all sorts of training on that. Check out the Help, help Center articles on that as well. Uh, but just, just so you know, you can really filter down your data with this. Next step. Now you're gonna upload a CSV file here. Well, Mason, what do you mean I gotta do a CSV file? I'm just swapping the owner. This is what I'm talking about. This is the fundamentals right here. So what does your CSV need to look like? Boom. Map those columns. Save that CSV as a template and keep it there. Build a, build a CSV or a build a spreadsheet with that right now. Create a template version of it so that every time you need it, you can just copy the template, input information. This is important, it's for data cleanliness. You're gonna upload it, and then you're gonna map columns, you're just gonna drag and drop some stuff into different boxes, and then bam, you're gonna review, and then your upload will start, and then you'll be notified when it's completed. Fundamentals, fundamentals, fundamentals. We have mastered the fundamentals, and we make fundamentals the easiest, least resistance as possible. If you're gonna be a fundamental real estate investor outside of us, good luck. You see, at REI SIFT, we've never sold chocolate. 
It's not something that's sexy. REI SIFT is like the Turkish get up of the real estate world. Nobody wants to do it, but when they do it and they do it consistently with focus, the strength and stability that occurs inside their business is unmatched in the real estate space. And that is a fact. We don't sell sexy chocolate. We sell Turkish get ups, man. These are the things that are going to take your business to the next level. Small incremental pieces of data clarity and refinement will take your business to the level that you want it to be. And if you really are passionate about that and you want to find more ways to refine, we are always producing content in that realm. One of our best ones right now is the Clarity and Chaos webinar. I'll put a link down below. Check it out. This is taking the chaotic world of real estate investing that's flooded with gurus that are reselling our stuff. The Clarity and Chaos webinar is accumulation of all of the refinement techniques that we've developed. We're giving it to real estate investors. We're telling you guys that it doesn't take much to get ahead in this space if you can just cut out the noise. And unfortunately, real estate is such a loud industry. So what that's telling us is there is a real need for this kind of education. It's not sexy. It's not flashy. It's not rah-rah. It's never been. But if you just implement and you just listen to what it is and you give yourself the ability to develop a new perspective, you will scale your company and you will have a healthy company that lasts and it can stand in the storms. And we want that for you. And that's what the Clarity and Chaos webinar is. Check it out. The link is in the description. Sign up there. And if you want to try out REI SIFT, you want to try out our free trial, use code SIFTU. This will give you $25 worth of skip tracing credits and direct mail credit so that when you join REI SIFT and you got a little bit of data or you want to transfer all your data, you can put it into our system and you can immediately start marketing and you can immediately see the clarity that you will have when you do start marketing.